The quality and the durability of an adhesive bond depends on a lot of factors. Besides choosing the right product and the right joint dimensions, the proper application of the right surface pretreatment is really important in this process. Welcome again to Better Made with Adhesives, our monthly video podcast about innovation applications and use cases of adhesive bonding in, the, in industrial manufacturing. In today's episode, I'm going to meet with Tolga Sentürk, a SICA colleague from Turkey, with whom I'm going to talk about how to achieve a zero-fault production in industrial manufacturing. According to the Fraunhofer Institute, IFAM, about 90% of the mistakes in adhesive bonding are due to applicator errors. Let's start. As you may know, Sika is a global company and um, I'm here today with one of our experts, um, industry experts from uh, Turkey. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Tolga Sentürk. Um, maybe you can give a short introduction about yourself. Sure, David, of course. Um, first of all, thank you for having me here. I'm the sales director of industry in Sika, Turkey. And I've been with Sika for almost eight years now. But the five years of my work with Sika was on the technical side, actually. I was a technical service manager before this position. Uh, we have something in common. I also started in technical service, so that's a good career start yeah. in Sika. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm also a chemical engineer, which is also related with the work we do here at Sika. So in your work in, uh, as an expert in, in Turkey, serving your customers, um, you brought the case with you about quality assurance in, in adhesive bonding. Um, what is the importance of uh, quality assurance when dealing with adhesives? Well, David, the quality and the durability of an adhesive bond uh, depends on a lot of factors, actually. Besides choosing the right product and joint, the right joint dimensions, the proper application of the right surface pretreatment is, is really important in this, in this process, actually. Now, what do you recommend to customers who, who are aiming for a zero-fault production? Well, uh, for a zero-fault application, a quality management actually should be established, starting from the idea point uh, stage, sorry, the idea stage until the execution stage. So what do you recommend to customers specifically in the different stages? What should they follow? Yeah, first of all, as I mentioned before, the right joint dimensions are really important. So during the design stage, the engineering stage, a care should be taken to, you know, to get the performance from the adhesive. So do you also support customers in that respect of... Uh... Yeah, we try to guide, actually. We are not a design uh, company, but we try to guide our customers, especially engineers, uh, with the right information so they can uh, use this information for their designing process. Okay, okay. And then um, after that, what, what are you doing? After designing and designing the right dimensions and choosing the right product, uh, then we can move on to the next stage actually, which is uh, trying to uh, find the right surface pretreatment. And in order to do this, we have to uh, execute some adhesion tests first. Yeah. So I believe with your lab in Turkey, you're also doing all that testing services for customers? Exactly, yes. We have a lab in Turkey where we can support our customers with adhesion tests and also extra tests that are demanded. Now, we have tested everything and it's about going for production. What, what else are you offering to customers? The next step is actually building a mock-up or, or, or a line trial at our customers. And during these uh, trials, we can also uh, guide our customers for the right equipment. This is also a service that we provide to our customers. Yeah, so you have a network um, and you can probably also use the, the Sika internal network. I mean, we have a system engineering and yeah. um, lots of people around the world that yeah, can yeah, help you there. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. Um, now, if, if I'm a customer and I'm starting up, I have probably to train all my people on the production line. How is that being done? After we finish the stage of the trials and everything is okay, then we start training the applicators especially. And also the, uh, all the persons in our customers that are related to this process. 
And after, after these uh, trainings are finished, then we can go to the uh, cereal production. This was very interesting. Now, uh, Tolga, you brought the case with you from, from one of your customers. Um, it is about in-process control. So what are you doing there to help your customer? Our customer actually uses our uh, activator uh, on their substrate. And this activator is clear, so it's not easy to see. It's not visible to the eye. You cannot just say this is applied right in the right way, or even if it's applied, you cannot say. So there should be a system where you can detect if this product is applied or not. So how, how are you doing this? How, how is it becoming visible? I can show you, David. Let's go to the lab. Excellent idea. Okay. Now, Tolga, we have here some samples and uh, I think you're going to show us how this uh, detection feature functions. Yeah, sure, um, David. Yeah, let's have a look. I will try to show it to you and our viewers here. As we talked before, uh, we as Sika try to make life easier for our customers. So this is one of those many services that we provide. So this is how it's going to be. We have a primer with a luminescence effect. So this is a black primer, and with this black primer, it's really sometimes hard to see it on a ceramic fit. So now I'm going to apply a little bit of this primer onto the ceramic fit, and you will be able to see the difference. So we always shake the primer first, but it's already shaken. It's already shaken, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And while I'm doing this, you know, we always advise to use enough primer in a different cup so that we do not contaminate our cup here. And always close to bottom. Exactly. At least the inliner, plastic inliner, while you're working on it. So. So what is the device you're using to apply it? This is uh, a melamine sponge, actually it's used to apply primer uh, on the surfaces. So we just do a small application over here and leave it just like that. So David, I'm going to ask you to assist me with the UV lamp over with there. The lamp? Yeah, please. So. And let's just show the difference to you. And. Oh, wow. Our customers. That's really glossy, see? shiny. Yeah, it is. It's so, really. So if you cannot see the difference really when the primer, if the primer is applied or not. But with the effect of the lumin luminescence inside the primer, you can easily see this. Yeah. So on this on this windshield, I can also easily see the black primer being applied. So what is a use case for this feature in the production? It is detectable easily. Even on a black surface, even when there is, you know, the light is not enough, is, or you're doing an automated application so that you could use some cameras to detect if the primer is applied uh, in the right way, or if it's um, applied excessively, or there is not enough primer on the surface. So this could be all detected with the help of the luminescence effect in our primer. Okay, so fully automated quality control exactly. in the production line. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, now this is a black solution. I, I know many people don't really like black primers because it can be a mess with spillage and all that. Exactly. Do yeah. we also have other products that contain oh. this feature? Yeah, we do actually. We have activators and cleaners which contain similar to the luminescent dye in this uh, primer, as you see here. So it's sometimes really hard to see uh, <clears throat> a clear chemical applied on a surface. You cannot know. But with the help of the uh, UV light, you could also easily detect if the application is done in the right way, or as I told you before with this, if it's done excessively or, or if it's not enough. So this is an easy way for our customers to detect uh, if the primer or the activator is applied in the right way. So you mentioned your customer has implemented this in, in production. How did he do that? Uh, okay. 
our customer uh, uses Sika Activator 306 LUM in their application. And to detect the application of this activator, because it's clear, you cannot see it in, with your eyes, if it's applied or not, uh, they just apply the activator on the part and put it into a cabin. Then the cabin is uh, under UV light. So the, there's also a special camera that just takes the picture of, of the applied component and then it's automatically uh, detected if the application is done right or there is something extra and excess application or there are some spots that are left uh, during the application. So that's <coughs> controlled and then documented digitally. Excellent. So you just mentioned documentation. I think in, in process control, it's very important to keep file on different things. So your customer is also using a second smart solution of Zika. So what is it? Yeah, we have another solution, like one of many. Uh, we have products like this. And on this uh, label of the product, there's a data matrix code. Looks like a QR code, but it's not a QR code. Yeah. There's a data matrix code, which contains the information about the product that's here. The name of the uh, product, uh, the expiration date of the product, SICA article number of the product, it's all uh, stored here in this data matrix code. So our customer just reads this uh, data matrix code and then it's again digitally documented in the system so that they can trace back to the component that they produce, which product is used, that's going to make life easier for them. Thank you, Tolga, for the uh, excellent introduction in two of the smart features we have built into our products. Um, if you're one of our customers, you will experience many more um, services and features we have built into our products. With that, I'd like to hand over back to the studio. I hope you enjoyed that sequence with Tolga, our Zika expert from Turkey. Um, as you know, Zika is present in many countries around the world where we have local people talking your language and supporting you from the first idea to the civil production. That was another edition of Better Made with Adhesives, our monthly video podcast. If you like to follow future editions, sign up to our YouTube channel or our newsletter that can be found on the website. See you in a month when it's again about Better Made with Adhesives here on that channel.